Hey y'all, and welcome back to Black Flag Athletics YouTube channel. I'm Tom Rini, head coach and owner here at Black Flag Athletics. Continuing on with our lessons. Actually, we're going to diverge a little bit away from our lessons before we get into the second, third lesson, talking about our strength bias program design for competitive CrossFit athletes, especially when they're first starting out. But we're going to diverge a little bit and talk a little bit here about the force velocity curve and the importance of the force velocity curve. If you watched our first two pieces here, we talked about the idea of doing uh, max effort days and dynamic effort days followed in with triphasic days. So oftentimes we'll hear people talk about max effort or lifting heavy all the time. There's a reason why we don't lift heavy all the time. There's a reason why you need to have dynamic effort days. Pretty much the reason is, is something called the force velocity curve here in strength conditioning. Force velocity curve is simply a metric that allows us to understand that we have different aspects of how to develop strength. When we have a contraction or a muscle contraction, you talk about the contractile force or the contractile potential of muscles, they work at different capacities or different velocities. So we work within the whole spectrum of training. Think about an Olympic lift. If you watch Olympic lifters, I always talk about Olympic weightlifter versus a crossfitter when they, when they, crossfitter when they first start. When you watch a CrossFitter first start their Olympic weightlifting, a lot of them try the old grip it and rip it. They think that if they grab the bar and pull it as hard and as fast as they can off the floor, they should be able to lift the weight. The reality is, is that we have to put ourselves in a position to exert the most force possible when we're picking the bar off the ground. As we're moving through our lifting positions, we transition from exerting maximal force or a great amount of force against the bar that will actually start to decrease as the velocity of the bar, the speed of the bar, has to increase. That's why the Olympic lifts are so great for athletes or almost any sport because you have a combination of the both aspects of it. Velocities are at their highest. After we get over the top of the knee, when we get into extension, where forces are at their greatest when we're at the bottom of the lift. Really, they peak out just about knee height for most Olympic lifts. So when you're training, you'll see percentages at all different ends of the spectrum. The idea being is that we're working both with maximum strength and maximum velocity. When we combine the two, you become a stronger, more athletic, more powerful person. Now between maximum strength and maximum velocity, so maximum strength being anything over 90% of what we're doing, right? and maximum velocity being probably 30%-ish uh, and under, all right? Within those spectrums, we have a couple of different aspects of strength that we need to work in with each aspect of it. First is the strength speed. That means we're working at a lighter weight, right? A lighter weight, and we're working with a little bit more velocity, but it's pretty much balanced. So we're working at a decent amount of force production with a decent amount of velocity on the bar, but we're edging or gearing more towards the strength side of it. So although we're trying to maximize speed, so we're thinking conceptually about moving the bar quickly, in reality, because of the percentages on the bar, we're talking that 70 to 80% spectrum, 70 to 90% spectrum, we're not able to move it as fast as we would like. Okay. In between there, we're working like 30 to 60% as peak power, right? Power is simply uh, force times velocity. So, and this is anywhere in that 30 to 60%, right? We know power equals force times velocity, right? How quickly can we move something? How quickly can we move an object? So this is where a lot of our Olympic weightlifting falls, right? We start here, but then we eventually transition into that range right there, okay? And this is a spot where we spend a lot of time for athletes. Um, we want to work that, again, working on being able to exert as much force against the bar, but being able to do it as quickly as possible. Now, when you work with me with Olympic Wagner or anybody here at Black Flag Athletics, you will hear us yell tempo. When we yell tempo, we mean slow things down through those positions where we need to apply the most amount of force. For all of us, that's from that ground to that knee height position, or if we're in a front rack position, say for anything overhead, it's in that dip and then we drive out, right? 
As we keep moving down the perspective, we move into the speed strength area. That speed strength area is going to, again, be the opposite of what we were doing here. So the weight's still relatively heavy, but we're able to move it a little bit quicker. So if you're a west side person or if you're working with us and you have a max effort day and a dynamic effort day, our max effort day will be working in this 90% spe spectrum. This speed strength is where we'll spend a majority of our other time, right? Working within that 40... Forty to fifty percent area. So we need to make sure that we're training every aspect of it. Remember, we have to work through both aspects. So forces are at their greatest as we pull from the floor up. Then once we get done exerting as much force as we need to, we can then decrease the amount of force, but we have to pick up the velocity in order to move that bar. So that gives you a kind of a, a deep dive, or not really a deep dive, a surface dive into where we want to go or why we're doing this type of work, mixing around max effort, dynamic effort, and then some triphasic work. So we'll be back with our next lesson, which is going to talk about how we're going to integrate or mix in our conditioning pieces along with our strength work as part of our strength bias uh, program. We'll see you next time. Man on three. One, two, three. Oh!